Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what happens in aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Now energy is really important in biology. For example, we need energy for movement. Humans and other mammals need energy to keep warm. And we need energy for chemical reactions to build larger molecules. For example, proteins are made by chemically joining amino acids. Now, the energy we need is supplied by a process called cellular respiration, but we normally just call this respiration for short. Respiration is an exothermic reaction because it releases energy and it takes place continually in all living cells. Now, there are two different types of respiration and you need to be able to compare them. In aerobic respiration, the sugar glucose is reacted with oxygen gas. This produces carbon dioxide and water, and it releases energy. So this shows the word equation for aerobic respiration, and it's essential that you learn this for your exam. Now one key fact is that aerobic respiration releases a great deal of energy. That's because the glucose molecule has been fully oxidized, and you'll find out more about oxidation in my chemistry videos. Now in the exam you could be asked for the chemical symbols for the molecules in this equation. The symbol for glucose is C6H12O6 and the symbol for oxygen is O2. The symbol for carbon dioxide is CO2 and the symbol for water is H2O. So as we've seen if oxygen is present then cells carry out aerobic respiration. But what if there's not enough oxygen? Well now the cells carry out anaerobic respiration. We're going to look at anaerobic respiration in two different situations and the first is in muscles. Muscle cells need a great deal of energy for contraction, but under certain conditions the amount of oxygen is limited. We'll be looking at those conditions in more detail in the next video on exercise. So when there's a shortage of oxygen, muscle cells respire anaerobically, and I'm showing you the equation for that here. During anaerobic respiration in muscles, glucose is converted to lactic acid. And as you can see, anaerobic respiration does not require any oxygen. Now, one key fact is that anaerobic respiration releases much less energy than aerobic respiration. That's because in anaerobic respiration, the oxidation of glucose is incomplete. And again, it's important to learn that. Now, anaerobic respiration can also take place in plant cells and in yeast cells. And I'm showing you that reaction here. So as you can see in this reaction, the glucose is converted to ethanol and carbon dioxide. And again, no oxygen is needed for this reaction. Now, in the case of yeast, this reaction is really useful. Anaerobic respiration in yeast cells is called fermentation. We use this reaction to make alcoholic drinks, such as beer. The alcohol in these drinks is ethanol, and that's produced by fermentation. Now, we also use yeast to make bread, and here the carbon dioxide produced by fermentation is useful. This creates bubbles in the dough, causing the bread to rise. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on respiration in my vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to describe what happens in aerobic and anaerobic respiration.